welcome to episode six of the Simply Josephine podcast. My name is Dacia and I'm Simply Josephine across the board on social media, website, blog, etc. So you can find all sorts of things out there under Simply Josephine. Today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about a few different things. We're getting ready to go on um, vacation, so I wanted to get this episode out before we took off. I'm going to talk about um, my last two dye projects. One was with Comfrey and one was with Kutch. And then I'm in, I eco printed both of those, so I'm going to talk a little bit about eco printing and that whole process. And then I'll show you a few of the latest things I've been making and a few of the aprons that will be accompanying me to Alaska. And I will be at the Wrangell Community Market and at the Blueberry Festival. So if you're in Wrangell or Ketchikan, either of those times, last weekend in July for the community market, first weekend in August for Blueberry Festival, I'll be there peddling my wares and you should come see what I got. But I'm going to show you a little preview of a few new items, new sewing items that is. And then we are going to move on to making... Menarda, Menarda fischelosa, also known as bee balm, um, wild oregano, wild bergamot. Anyway, I'm going to make an oxymel with this and dry some too. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. I will show you, okay, first things first, the Comfrey dye bath. I eco printed and dyed a big chunk of linen, which is right here, and I also did this dress that I'm wearing, which I'll stand on a chair in a minute and show you, but... Um, yeah, this, this, I, I like the comfrey color. It's kind of this grayish color here. And then there's some of the eco print, eco prints. There's another big leaf. Anyway, I uh, thought this was natural colored linen when I ordered it, but it got here and it was very cream colored. So I decided right away that I would experiment with dyeing with linen because I haven't dyed linen yet. And I like it and I think I'm going to continue to dye more with that. I've also been dyeing my usual hemp stretch fabric, hemp um, uh, jersey knit. And oh, I dyed this. I bought this dress at a thrift store and um, it was just, you know, your basic hemp color. And I found I just didn't wear it, even though it's really comfortable and I like it. And it was a little long. So I did this, made, made the crescent there, because I really like this on my skirts. I think it looks a little bit cuter than longer. This skirt went down right to my knees, so it was kind of boxy. I wanted to change it up a bit, so I cut that and then just hemmed it up and eco printed this. And what I have on underneath is this is um, an onion skin dye right here. I think in episode four, I go over all about onion skin dyeing, but this is onion skin dyed. And then here is the dress. I really like it. 
All right, so for starting it off, I used a, an alum mordant. I alum mordanted, well, first I scoured, of course, scoured and then mordanted the linen and this. And when it was soaking in the mordant, I picked all my comfrey, what was left of it. I dried some too for myself, and then I had a bunch of extra. If you have a comfrey patch, it gets big quick. So I chopped all that up and started boiling that down. And then after that was boiled, I let it cool down and let it sit overnight. Meanwhile, my linen and this dress are soaking in the mordant, the alum mordant. And then let's see, the next day I um, went out in the morning and picked all my leaves, the tannin rich leaves. I like hawthorn, alder, this is just what we have growing around here. Um, uh, mountain ash, roses, I picked all those and I soaked those in a iron solution. The iron solution is one teaspoon iron, powdered iron. It's like ferrous sulfate, I believe. And I mixed that in one gallon of water and I put all my leaves in there to soak. And then meanwhile, I got my fabrics out rinsed them, rinsed the mordant out of them, spread them all out with my little gloves on, and right before I started eco printing, I got the pot ready to steam the eco prints, because I like to steam the prints. So I, um, after I laid that out, I got the rocks in my pot, got that ready on the stove, so I could just put the eco print in there. And then I also, at that point, brought the comfrey back in, and I also added about a teaspoon of that iron to the comfrey. So this is comfrey with iron modifier up here. So I got those going. I did the eco print in the usual eco print fashion, which I go over in um, the last, um, not the last episode, but the last podcast episode, episode number five. Um, you can see some good um, footage of us making the eco print. So I did the whole eco print process, and then I put the bundles, these in the comfrey dye bath, and I just let that cook for, for a long time, a couple of hours. I would say probably even more like four hours. And then I just shut it off and I set it outside and I let it cool naturally. And it was probably even like the next morning when I get up, I just take them out of the dye pot, the cold dye pot, and just hang them on the line to line dry. And then I kind of like picked all the little leaves off and they just kind of blew away. And then, um, then I washed it three times in my washing machine. But if there's any debris, I'll just hose that down outside. But um, this one didn't really have a lot of debris. The leaves just kind of fell off and, and there and there it was. Yeah, so that turned out really, really fun. And I was just so happy with how it turned out. And I've already made a linen crossback apron with the eco print. Yeah, I really like how some of these turned out, the leaves. This right here is a rose. And this is alder. I think that's hawthorn. Yeah, so this is available. I will have this at market this week, and I will also have it in Alaska if it's still in my possession at that time. Happy, happy with how that turned out. And then here's the other one. I don't know what to do with the rest of this linen. I kind of want to make some bags out of it. I don't know. I might make some bags, 
or I might just make another linen cross back apron and have a couple of them available. It's what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking there. So I uh, really want it. you can reuse your mordant, you know, if it's within a few days of the first time you made it, you can always add a little bit more alum to it if it's been a couple of days. But I just decided um, I would do, while I had all of the pots dirty, so to speak, I decided I would just do another eco print of just cotton. And then I had a little bit of kutch powder, and so I used that. So once I was done with one eco print, I got busy on another of just the cotton kutch. And I like this. The eco print didn't pick up as much. I'm thinking, see, I reused the iron. I might. Uh, mix up my own batch of iron and also these leaves weren't in the iron very long and they are not as bright but i'm not quite sure what i'll do with all of this fabric i've got quite a bit i could make an apron out of it i'm thinking i might do some aprons or some bags i'm not i'm not too sure what to do there but it'll come to me, and in the meantime, I have it. So I just did repeated the same process: eco print, steam. Only I, this is Kutch, and this is Comfrey with iron modifier. And so that's that's my latest dye project. Things I've been working on. What's on the sewing table basically is just all kinds of things that are selling, things that are moving, and I'm just trying to keep up with my inventory. My serger was having some issues that I was kind of like, whoa, but I got it fixed, and so I have been pumping out the skirts, the, uh, the yoga skirts. Uh, they have this nice yoga waistband that you can wear down lower or wherever you want to wear it. But this is some new fabric. I like this fabric. It's, um, I believe, an art gallery print. Woodland. Something or another. In knit. This is jersey knit. So I've been working on these in small, medium, and large, and working on other skirts because they seem to be going well and like I mentioned we're going to be going to Alaska soon and I'm going to be doing the two events up there so I wanted to get some some Alaska specific kind of aprons so I'm going to have two of these with the anchors just your regular Butcher style, slips over the head, you can adjust that. Three front pockets, and the ties you can reach around and tie in the front, or tie in the back. I have some of these in other prints too, but um, I'm going to have at least two of these anchors. Because Alaska people lack their anchors. <laughs> Something else Alaska people love are mermaids. Aren't these pretty? So this is cute. I have two of these and then I'm going to make, I have just enough fabric to make a little one. So I'll have one child's with this print. This is the regular sassy style. Got that one. And then this is one of my favorites. I really like this fabric and I ordered a bunch more of it. And it is these, this moon fabric. This is a cotton and steel is the brand of this fabric. And I love it. 
so pretty and it's nice and dark too. So right now I only have one of these, but we'll see. I'm going to have um, some time here to do a little bit of sewing, although I am trying to um, just get everything ready for us to go, which as you know, can be a little hectic. A little hectic for sure. All right, so we can move on to this Monarda. I uh, this this herb is so wonderful. I love it. it. Has so much flavor. I really like to dry the Monarda, and um, use it for culinary purposes. I really like it in soups and stews, and it almost has an oregano type flavor. So I, uh, it's good in spaghetti sauce, but I love it in bone broth. And it dries up, let's see, oh, this is all I have <laughs> left from last year, so it's perfect timing. But I used probably at least this full over the course of the winter. So I'll want to do that again. So I'm just going to stop for a minute, wash my hands, and be back here in a flash. All right, welcome back. Let's, let's dry some Monarda. Just going to cut a piece of twine. And I just get my little bundle here. I'll pick through some of these. And I'll get all the stems kind of about the same, same height here. Get a few more. This looks pretty good. Oh, the smell is just so delicious and medicinal. You can just smell that it's good stuff. So I'm just going to tie this tight and I will go around again, tie it just very simply. Everybody has their own way of tying things. And then I'll just do a little loop at the end because I have a bunch of nails here, over here, for drying. So I'll hang this up. Ooh. This one's a little shorter, so I'll probably move it over. I just got this the other day, and it's already dry get that in the in the jar okay now moving on to the oxymel which an oxymel is just a fancy word for uh, apple cider vinegar and honey so I will just start here I'm just pulling the leaves off gently and then popping the top off. You could chop this if you wanted. I don't. This is how I'm doing it. These have been hanging out for a while. I actually harvested these last night. I usually like to harvest them and then let the, uh, the bugs vacate. So things I like to do with the Monarda, um, such a good marinade for meat, especially venison. And then you can fry your steaks in coconut oil and a bunch of dried up Monarda. And the Monarda Oxymel makes for a lovely marinade. You can add some garlic or not, but it is so delicious. And I do plan on putting these into a medicine collective or maybe having a few extra to sell this, this year. 
So some of these will be available when I come, this fall, when I come back from Alaska. I'm getting excited to go there. I grew up in Wrangell, so that's where we're going back. Always a good time. It's so nice to have that um, ocean energy. It's kind of recharges me a little bit. Yeah. We're almost finished up here. I don't know what I'll do with these extra ones. Maybe make a little vinegar, maybe dry some more. I don't know. She is, this Monarda fischelosa, is in the mint family. Uh, yeah. Very, very popular with the bees. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'll do with those. I'll just set those off to the side for now. And we'll get ready to... So it's about um, three-fourths full here with the tops. And I've chopped up some of the stems and put a lot of leaf material in here. And we are just going to go with the standard Oxymel recipe, which is one-fourth honey to three-fourths apple cider vinegar. So we'll start with the honey. And... Probably about good. And chopsticks. Good, I got some right there. <laughs> Are good for poking, poking stuff down. My apple cider vinegar. Pour that in here. When I was teaching that rose class, it was so funny when we were pouring with this jug of <laughs> vinegar, we were joking about it being gasoline. <laughs> it was so funny. Then you take your jug of gasoline. <laughs> that rose class was so much fun. I had four people. The herb walk was fantastic. Yeah, so I'm getting, allowing that vinegar to get down in there. Be careful, I'm making a mess here. Sometimes these jugs are leaky. Whoa! <laughs> it is leaking out the bottom there. Yep. Kitchen witchery. You're bound to have a few spills and messes here. But I will stop for a moment and clean this up, and then we can finish up talking about Menarda and some other things that I have going on. I'm back. I got everything cleaned up. And now I am going to put this. I put wax paper in between the lid and the canning lid. Otherwise, vinegar kind of eats it and corrodes it. And you're going to do a lot of shaking. So you're going to want to get that on there tight. Otherwise, you'll have leaking. And I just sort of... Whoop, lose an earring. <laughs> Shake so much your earrings fly off. Yeah. So I will do this several times throughout the day. And you might need to open it back up, add a little more vinegar, and you can press the herb material down with the chopstick at that time. 
But something that's very important, oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Monarda fischulosa, oxymel, full, full of important nutrients to consume in the winter time. Always label And today is July 15th. Whew, it is just flying by. Summer's half over. Kids will be back in school in a blink. Okay. And there she is. Make sure you shake it often to get all that honey dissolved in the vinegar and yeah beautiful I will take you over here and show you um, some of the herbs I have been create working with creating not creating I didn't create the herbs <laughs> I've been drying so I have some mullein here the Monarda, some daisies, a little more mullein, and this is my second batch of, or second tray that I've dried of uh, red clover. Got some roses dry in there, and then this is all, it's about dried up, this is the linden off of my linden tree right there, right there in the yard. So that's what I've been drying. This, and I've also dried some comfrey. I have some more linden up here. And some different herbal oils. And some vinegars, there's chai vinegar, self heal vinegar, got some oxide daisy going in oil, and a rhubarb bitters. Thanks for taking the time to watch this and hanging out, and please feel free to join in the conversation. Uh, leave a comment if there's something you'd like to discuss or something you'd like to see me do. And yeah, I think that about wraps it up. I, I have some ideas. The next episode will probably be more themed around Alaska and our trip and vacation. But I, I look forward to that. I look forward to that a lot. And anyway, in the meantime, have a great summer time, enjoy the sun, good time, good food, and I'll see you next time. Bye.